Am I the a-hole for not telling my roommate I owned a house? Original post. Brief backstory. About a year ago, my last remaining grandparent passed away and my father inherited all assets, including a house. I had been saving for a nice down payment, at least 50%, so I could have a lower mortgage payment each month, thus allowing me to save money for travel. When my father inherited his house, which he had no interest in moving into yet, he offered to sell it to me for slightly below market rate, with the caveat that he and my stepmother could eventually move into the basement apartment. I agreed, because they're both incredible people who were not at all invasive and would give me my privacy if they lived there. So I paid a 60% down payment, financed the rest and moved in. Present day, about six months ago, I started considering renting out the finished basement apartment. It has two bedrooms, one bathroom, a living room and a small kitchenette, sink, fridge, microwave but no oven. A friend of mine said his brother was moving to my city and needed a place. He's a brand new teacher and doesn't make great money, so he needed a place that wasn't expensive. I offered to let him rent my basement for way less than market rate of $650, which would include utilities. He readily accepted inside a year-long lease. Well, a few days ago, he asked if he could start paying the landlord directly instead of giving me rent money each month. I was under the impression my friend had told him I owned a house, so I was confused and I told him we don't have a landlord and that I'm the owner. He got very upset and screamed at me for lying for over six months and taking advantage of him by making him pay so much in rent. For the record, an apartment similar to the one in my house would be well over twice what is paying me, closer to three times for something as nice. He asked how much of my mortgage is covering, and I said, why does that matter? You're getting a nice quiet place to live, access to a full kitchen and laundry room, and you're paying an amount that you can afford. My personal finances aren't really a factor here. He stormed out of the room and slammed the basement door. He's still not speaking to me. I asked a few other friends and some family members, and most said I'm wrong for having him cover my mortgage payments. Only a few say I'm at the right. So am I the a-hole for having my roommate cover $650 of my $775 a month mortgage? Edited to add, he has a lease, so I won't be evicting him over this alone. If it does any damage or becomes hostile, I'll look at the eviction process. But for now, he will remain unless he chooses to break the lease, which I'd allow him to do if he wants. He also didn't bother to read the lease before signing. The lease clearly states I'm the homeowner. I didn't trick him or keep info from him. He simply didn't read what he was signing. I didn't get the house for almost free as some people choose to believe. My father has sold it to me for about 75% of its value. More or less as an advance on rent he and my stepmother will pay when they move in here in a few years. We all agree they won't pay monthly rent, but will contribute to utilities and groceries at that time. I also made a 60% down payment, so I have quite a bit invested, as well as paying about $1,500 a month out of pocket for taxes, insurance, maintenance, utilities, etc. Now for the top comments before reading the updates. I'm not understanding why dude's mad here. He thought he was paying some stranger's mortgage and instead finds out he's paying yours, or at least a good chunk of it. How does that offend him? Dude's weird. Not the a-hole, especially since it's not like you were hiding that information from him. The one thing you mentioned did touch a nerve for me. I recently moved into my own house after renting my brother's basement for several years. I was paying about 75% of what rent in our area would have been, and while I technically had access to a full kitchen, in practice I never really had use of it. I had to get used to eating mostly microwavable or frozen meals, because with multiple grown people cooking and he and his wife having priority due to being the homeowners, and our differing schedules, as I worked second shift so I was trying to eat my first meal of the day while they were making dinner, and they were in bed 5-6 to six hours before me so I couldn't make noise in the shared spaces. I was really locked out of doing much, and ate like crap for those years. The full bath was a similar story. Just having access to something doesn't mean you have use of it in practice. So renting someone's basement isn't the same as having a full personal living space. I have no rules regarding when he uses the kitchen or laundry room. I work long hours, so I'm not home a lot of the day and evening. He gets in at about 4 p.m. and I'm not back until closer to 8 p.m. OMG, are they freaking serious? What do they think people do when they rent? They cover the landlord's mortgage payment. You are definitely not the a-hole, and quite honestly, do not renew the lease with this person. How entitled can one person be? I rented an Airbnb for a few months when I was new to the area. More precisely, I rented a bedroom. Yes, I had access to the kitchen, shared bathroom with whoever else were guests, shared laundry room and pool, but still, bedroom. For more than you're charging for a finished basement apartment. It sounds like your renter is going to get sticker shock when he moves out. Tell everyone who thinks you're ripping the guy off to check the market rate for the area, then go kick rocks. Were you supposed to let him stay for free? 
Again, not the a-hole, but I think I'd start looking for smarter friends. I'm only friends with his brother, and he thinks he's an absolute moron for being mad over cheap rent. He came over here yesterday and basically told his brother what an idiot he is, which made me laugh since I could hear him from upstairs. Well, at least you have him on your side. Good grief. I can't imagine going through life so dense. Don't forget, the tenant is a teacher, shaping young minds. I fear for future generations impacted by this buffoon. Not the a-hole. The question is it a mortgage. It's fair market rate for what he's getting. I get the shock is feeling, but is not entitled to free housing just because you're friends. God, I hate defending a landlord. Makes me feel dirty. I did not create an LLC or anything. Although I did have an attorney write the lease, I made sure it included no penalty for breaking it early as long as I'm given 45 days notice. I can definitely make the payments without a roommate, but wanted to be able to save more each month simply because I like to travel. And I'm also taking on the financial responsibility of repairs and such since I do own the house. You're also paying every other household bill for things he's using as well. Plus taxes, insurance repairs. It can add up quickly. Taxes and insurance are more than the principal for my mortgage each month. Now for the first update. I intended to speak to him over the weekend, but he never returned my texts asking when a good time to discuss things would be. So Sunday afternoon, I sent a text stating I would be entering the basement at 6 p.m. Monday evening. He never replied. When I went into the basement, some of his belongings were there, but some weren't. Bed was there, but no dresser or side tables. And the second bedroom he was using as an office has nothing but boxes. The kitchenette was disgusting. The carpets were filthy, and walls had dents and divots in them, and the paint. I left him a note stating he needs to do some repairs and clean the kitchenette so as not to attract vermin. Then I went back upstairs. Well, he came back in today, early this morning, and was fuming at me for entering the basement without permission. I told him I had given him more than 24 hours notice per the lease via text message before entering his area. His reply was that he didn't get that because he blocked my number. So somehow it's still my fault for not informing him I would be down there. I ask him if he intends to stay out of the lease or if he wants to break it. He said he's leaving and will live in his car until he finds a new place. I told him that's fine and that if he has all his belongings out by the end of the month, I won't make him pay September and half of October's rent, as the lease requires, and I'll refund the days he isn't here. He tried to tell me he doesn't need to pay that rent because he has 45 days to vacate. But that's only the notice period if he intends to leave. The lease still requires rent for those 45 days. So he's mad about that. I told him I'm being kind by letting him out early with zero financial repercussions. He was also told he's required to leave the apartment as clean as it was when he moved in, which was spotless since I had it professionally cleaned prior to his lease beginning, or he would not get his deposit back. He's throwing a tantrum about that too. He seems to be working on clearing the rest of his stuff out now. I told him when he's done, send me notice in writing, text or email, and I'll send him a refund for the days in August he isn't occupying the apartment. I have indoor ring cameras that I turned off when he moved in, but I've turned them back on until he's gone. I won't trust that he won't do more damage. Right now, I've locked myself in my office on the second story since he's really mad and was throwing things around in the basement and main kitchen. His brother and sister-in-law are also coming over the next hour or so because I don't feel entirely safe being alone in the house with him. As soon as he gives me notice that he's completely vacated the apartment, I'll be changing or deleting all the passwords slash codes for all the deadbolts, alarm system, internet, etc. so he can't access anything at all. I'm ready to be done with him and to feel safe in my own home again. Thanks to all who read the original post in AITA. I'll post any additional updates here in my profile, though I hope this is the end of it. Reality's gonna slap him so hard in the face. I think it already has. He moved all his stuff out, notified me of his complete vacancy of the apartment, and is already whining to his brother about not being able to find anything online in his price range, which I'm told is $800 a month, with the utilities included. He won't find that where we are, unless he shares a bedroom with at least one other person. Well, that's not your problem anymore, fortunately. Just focus on your well-being and safety. I hope you are safe. I think he cannot comprehend you being the owner. Such a moron. He made some vague threats. Nothing I feel I should call the police over, but I still let his brother know just in case. My friend's wife is mad and is on her way over. My friend will be here after he finishes work. Out of curiosity, how old is this guy? I also kind of amazed he's responsible for children if he's throwing tantrums like this. He's either 22 or 23. I don't remember. He graduated college in December, so he's early 20s. I'm genuinely baffled by this guy. 
like I'd move in right now for that price. And I don't even live in a state with particularly high cost of living. The only thing I can think of outside of straight mental issues is a huge sense of entitlement. Man's never been told no. As a teacher, my hot take. This guy was at the end of summer break when this started, not charging 45 days of September or October rent. I think he was broke. He probably was in a district where you have to opt into withholding for summer paychecks. He probably hasn't been paid since June. He wanted to mess around a landlord for a month or more by pretending there was some confusion with who and how to pay. He was never paying, and he was always running off instead of dealing with it. The odd part is the OP sounds like a decent gal and probably would have made a deal with him. Some people do not know when they have it good. Now for the last update three months later. The former tenant begged to come back, but I declined. Actually, I offered him the apartment for over market value. Market value is about $2,500, and I told him he could come back for $3,300 to make him go away. He also declined my offer. No idea where he ended up, but after some of the names he called me after, I wouldn't let him back in. I don't care. I'm still good friends with his brother. He's a good guy who laughed when I told him about my offer of $3,300 a month. I didn't ask where the former tenant landed. I'm sure he has several roommates, but again, I don't really care. I will not be renting it out again anytime soon. I had to do some repairs, so I'm hesitant to let anyone else in. I may let my cousin's daughter move in next year, but I know her. I know she's respectful of people's property. Unless my parents move in before then. But definitely no more renting to strangers. Last story. Am I the a-hole for not letting my stepdaughter and her family move into my house? When I married my wife, she had two kids. Jane was 12 and Ian 8. We had two of our own afterwards. Jane and Ian's dad, John, is, in my opinion, not a good guy. He rarely paid child support, and he worked under the table a lot to lower the amount he should pay. One Christmas, he stayed with us so he sees the kids open gifts in the morning. He had the audacity to switch a label on a gift I got Ian, so it came from him. I just swallowed a crappy behavior to not start a fight with the kids present. His kids love him, though. He can do no wrong in their eyes. When Jane got married, he walked her down the aisle even though I paid for the wedding. I wasn't even acknowledged on the invitation. Once again, I didn't complain because the wedding wasn't about me. When Jane had her first child, I was told in no uncertain terms that I was not going to be her kid's grandfather. I was just her mom's husband. Ian and I are friends. He is always polite with me and we have bonded somewhat. After their mom died, he still came to see me and we often share a meal. He has brought his fiancé to meet me and he hand-delivered my invitation to make sure I knew he wanted me there. Since her mom's passing, Jane has not contacted me. The funeral was the last time I saw her or her kids. I thought Ian's wedding would be the next time I would see her. However, the economy has kicked her family pretty hard and they lost their house. They need a place to stay. She called me about moving in with me. She wants me to move my kids into their old room so her family can have the basement suite in my house. I told her no. I wasn't going to uproot my kids from their area to accommodate her. I offered to let her have two rooms upstairs with me and she said she didn't want that. Only the basement suite would do. I said it wasn't going to happen and left it at that. Her father won't slash can't help her out since he lives in a bachelor apartment. Ian lives in another city. Jane said that if her mother were alive, she would make me let her have the basement since it was her house too. So I reminded her that I owned a house before I married her mom and that it was 100% mine. Ian has reached out, and I made sure he knew the whole story. He knows I offered her two rooms for free and said she was dumb not to take the help. I feel bad about this whole situation, but I'm not going to move my kids out of their space. They are teenagers now, and I'm teaching them to take care of themselves. They're also still dealing with losing their mom. I am not super excited about letting someone who dislikes me into our lives, but I'm still willing to help her. I feel like an a-hole, but I'm not changing my mind. Am I the a-hole? Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. You were always her mother's husband, not her stepfather. Or even as the father of her half-siblings. It also sounds like she hasn't even been in touch with them. Yet, she's now happy to upset all your lives. Exactly. She's lucky you offered her the two bedrooms, because personally speaking, I wouldn't let her in my house after all the disrespect she has shown me right up until now. But OP is a better person than me. The most she would get from me is a long-stay motel for one month or a ride to the local housing office if I'm feeling charitable. She's a user and have been taking advantage of OP for years. And if she did move in, I doubt she would ever leave. She's very entitled for someone who is facing homelessness. Not the a-hole. Don't let someone in your house that hates you. It would be a complete nightmare. Not the a-hole. And I wouldn't even have offered the two rooms. It's her life. She is an adult. She made her choices. Not the a-hole. 
She doesn't like you but expects you to house her and her kids. I wouldn't even give them the two rooms because you know she is going to try and guilt your children to get them out of the basement. And constantly be hostile. She wanted the basement so that she wouldn't have to interact with the family, but not the family that actually lives in the house. The stress of allowing her to move in would be unrelenting. Not the a-hole. Your stepdaughter painted herself in this corner, and she'll need to figure a way out. Personally, I think you need to rescind the offer of two rooms upstairs, as I don't trust her, her husband, and her kids to not bully and harass your bio kids into giving up their space for her and her family. And like most leeches, once they move into free housing, getting them back out will take a Vatican-authenticated miracle. In my humble opinion, that's why they're so adamant about having the basement apartment. Because she already knows this is a long-term living situation, 